of the derivative with respect to n of n squared over the derivative with respect to n of 2 to the n minus 1. Oh, quick reminder. If you remember, the derivative with respect to x of a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of x natural log of a. So it would be the same thing for derivative with respect to n. So derivative of n squared is just 2n over the derivative of 2 to the power of n is 2 to the power of n times natural log of 2. And derivative of negative 1 is just 0, so you don't have to do anything with that one. Okay, so now you have to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So now here you have 2 times n over 2 to the power of n times a constant natural log of 2. Okay. But if we plug in a really big number again, and that number keeps getting bigger and bigger, 2 times that really big number would just give you a really big number. And again, you have 2 to the power of some really big number, which again gives you some really big number. So we still have our infinity over infinity. Do it again? Yep, which means we do it again. That means you have the limit of the derivative with respect to n of 2n over, uh oh we can actually factor out the natural log of 2 since that's a constant, times the derivative with respect to n of 2 to the power of n as n approaches infinity. <coughs> All right, so we end up with the limit as n approaches infinity Derivative of 2 times n is just 2. And we have our natural log of 2 here. So the derivative of 2 to the power of n is just 2 to the power of n natural log of 2 again. Okay. So now if we're looking at it, The limit as n approaches infinity of 2 over 2 to the power of n times natural log of 2 squared. Okay. So once again, we just look at it as our n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. If our n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we actually end up with the limit of 2 as n approaches infinity over the limit of 2 to the power of n, and we can actually factor that natural log of 2 squared out. Times the limit, 2 to the n as n approaches infinity. Okay, so as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this gets closer and closer to infinity. The limit of a constant is just a constant. So you have 2 over the limit of a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is actually approaching infinity. Okay. So since you have a constant over a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that means you're getting closer and closer to 0. So this one converges to zero. Any questions on that one? All right.
Now, for a couple of them, you will need to kind of go back to the squeeze theorem. I don't know if you remember using that, but we'll do a quick review of it. Oh, anyone still writing? All right. All right, so for the squeeze theorem, we'll bring that down a little bit. If, let's say, the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity equals L, and the limit b sub n as n approaches infinity equals L also, and there exists an integer n where a sub n is less than or equal to c sub n, which is less than or equal to b sub n. For all of n greater than the integer. Then that actually means since your outer limit is equal to L and your other side is equal to L. That means the middle uh -oh, is equal to L. All okay. So if we wanted to graph that or look at it uh, in a graphical way, and I'll bring this down here. So let's say if you have the limit of your sequence a sub n. Okay, and we know that's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to some limit L. Okay, so let's say if you have your b sub n. And as n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to that same limit. Okay. So let's say if we have some c sub n, I'll make this a little bit longer so I can kind of exaggerate the pattern. Okay, so let's say if we have some c sub n that's going all out here. But at some point, let's say even there, but at some point, it stays here. That means if we have some value of uppercase n, every value past that, it would be sandwiched in between those two limits. So as this one gets closer and closer to the limit, and this one gets closer and closer to the limit, this kind of stays in between and is sandwiched in between those two. Hence, sandwich theorem, or squeeze theorem, or in some books, sandwich theorem, depending on which one you look at. All right, any questions on that one? All right. I'll leave that up for a few seconds. Right, so let's say, for example, find the limit as n approaches infinity 
of the sequence. A sub n equals cosine of n divided by n. So here, we just want to start off with the fact that cosine is always going to be between negative 1 and 1. So we know that negative 1 and 1 are your borders for cosine. Okay. So what if we get each one of those terms and divide by n? So that would give us uh -oh, negative 1 over n less than or equal to cosine, oh, cosine of n over n. There we go. This is less than or equal to 1 over n. Because okay, anything you do to one section, you have to do to all of them. Okay. Now what if you want to find the limit of each section? That means you have the limit of negative 1 over n as n approaches infinity less than or equal to the limit cosine of n divided by n as n approaches infinity, which is less than or equal to the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity. Now, two of those we already know. We know as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, a constant divided by a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger is just getting really, really close to zero. So you have zero, which is less than or equal to the limit of cosine of n divided by n as n approaches infinity which is less than or equal to the limit of 1 over n as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, once again, is 0. Okay. So if the number below it has a limit of 0 and the number above it has a limit of 0, then that means this, by the squeeze theorem, has a limit of 0 also. So the limit of cosine of n over n as n approaches infinity equals zero. They didn't ask, but we'll just say that it converges. All right, any questions on that one? All right. Leave that up for a few seconds. Okay, so let's say for our next example. Determine if Say b sub n is equal to 1 plus tangent inverse of n divided by n converges, and if so, to what? Oh, to what? Or diverges. So once again, we have to remember where we're going to start as far as our squeeze theorem. 
So if you remember the graph of your tangent inverse is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So now we just add one to each term. Okay, so that means we have negative pi over two plus one, which is less than or equal to one plus tangent inverse of the n, which is less than or equal to pi over two plus one. And if we want to simplify it a little bit, we could. But you don't really have to, but it does make it a little bit easier. So you have negative pi. If you make that 2 over 2, negative pi plus 2 over 2, which is less than or equal to 1 plus tangent inverse of n, which is less than or equal to pi plus 2 over 2. And the reason that made this easier is because now we're just going to divide everything by n. Okay, so if we divide each term by n, you have negative pi plus 2 divided by 2n, which is less than or equal to 1 plus tangent inverse of the n divided by n, which is less than or equal to pi plus 2 divided by 2n. Okay. So now we get the limit of each one. As n approaches infinity. So we have the limit of negative pi plus 2 divided by 2 times n as n approaches infinity, which is less than or equal to the limit of 1 plus tangent inverse of n divided by n as n approaches infinity which is less than or equal to the limit pi plus 2 over 2n as n approaches infinity. Okay. So from both ends, you have a constant divided by a value that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you have 0, which is less than or equal to the limit of 1 plus tangent inverse of n, divided by n as n approaches infinity, which is less than or equal to 0. Okay. So again, by the squeeze theorem, the limit of this sequence is 0. So it converges. limit as n approaches infinity, 1 plus tangent inverse of n divided by n is 0. So we know it converges. Any questions on that one?
let's say if we wanted to determine if, let's say, some b sub n equals n squared minus n sine of n divided by n squared converges or diverges. And if it converges to what? Now with this one, it'll actually be easier to rewrite it. Okay, so if you have n squared minus n sine of n divided by n squared, that actually equals 1 minus sine of n over n. You have n squared minus n squared, or n squared over n squared divided by, I mean minus n divided by n squared. So they kind of cancel out. So this one's a lot easier to work with than this one. Oh, I already wrote the solution. So for this one, since you're dealing with sine, just like cosine, the values of sine all go between negative 1 and 1. Okay. So since we're trying to make it there, we can go ahead and divide each one of them by n. So we end up with negative 1 over n less than or equal to sine of n over n, which is less than or equal to 1 over n. Okay. So now we can just subtract 1 from each term. So if we subtract one from each, we have negative 1 over n minus 1, which is less than or equal to sine of n over n minus 1, which is less than or equal to 1 over n minus 1, okay. which gets us close, but these two have to be switched in order for us to match up what we have, okay? So we'll multiply each one of those terms by negative 1. Okay, but you know as soon as you multiply an inequality by a negative number, you have to switch your sign. So remember to switch your signs. So if you multiply this by negative 1, you end up with positive 1, well, might as well make it 1 over n, keep it in order. 1 over n plus 1. Your signs switch, so that becomes greater than or equal to. That becomes negative, that becomes positive. So it's 1 minus sine of n over n. Again, the sign switches direction. And that becomes 1 minus 1 over n. Okay. So you can actually get this whole thing and flip it around. So 1 minus 1 over n is less than or equal to 1 minus sine of n over n, which is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1. Okay. So all we did was get this and flip it, which is still true, okay? 
So now we have the middle term that we're looking for. So we just apply the limit to each term. As n approaches infinity to each term. Okay, so we have the limit of 1 minus 1 over n as n approaches infinity. Group those together, which is less than or equal to the limit of 1 minus sine of n over n as n approaches infinity, which is less than or equal to the limit of 1 over n plus 1 as n approaches infinity. Okay, so we know here if we did find the limit of each one of those terms, the limit of a constant is just a constant, and the limit of a constant divided by n as n is getting bigger will eventually reach, will get close to zero or approach zero. So here, you have the limit of 1, which is less than or equal to the limit of 1 minus sine of n divided by n as n approaches infinity, which is less than or equal to the same thing here. This will eventually approach 0. This is just a constant, so that stays the same. So you have 1. So by the squeeze theorem, we can pretty much assume that the limit of this middle term is 1. Oh, I don't really need that one. I'll put it down here. Okay, so by the squeeze theorem, the limit of n squared minus n sine of n over n squared as n approaches infinity is equal to 1. So you know it converges. Yes? At the start of the problem, could we have separated the terms? Oh, yeah, if you wanted to, you could. Yeah, because I did that and it was just the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 yeah. minus the limit of... Oh, yeah, you could have done that if you wanted to. Yeah, just the limit of that and then found the limit of this one using the squeeze theorem. Yeah. See, I'm trying to think... Yeah, Actually, just... yeah, even if you did that, you have the special right. limit rule. Yeah, you could have used that. Yeah, so. would have been between 0 and 0. Yeah. Um, would that be subtracting the limit of a positive sign? Uh, for which part? Um, just that part that you were just pointing oh, at. This one? If I were to separate it into two separate limit problems, would it be subtracting a positive limit? Mm, nope. Actually, with that one, it depends on what the limit would be, but for this one, it would just be the limit of 1 minus the limit of sine of n okay. over n, yeah. So this one would have eventually just reached zero if we use the squeeze theorem. Yeah. Um, would you be able to write it as, like, plus the limit of negative sine of n over n? Oh, yeah, if you wanted to, you could have done it that way, yeah. Because if, even if you had, let's say, a constant up here, a negative constant is still just constant. Approach infinity. All right. Any other questions on that one? All right. 